Hey guys, still here and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Today I'm going to be doing the contest in the Black Sea. It's a mission from the Naval Academy. Our naval forces in the Black Sea are scarce and do not include any battleships. The Russians possess more and heavier ships. Two of our remaining cruisers need the support of your destroyers to attack and destroy the commanding Russian ships in the area. A retrofitted Dreadnought and a modern battlecruiser. The enemy supports their large warships with numerous destroyers, which are, however, of outdated technology. Nevertheless, you should not be, they should not be underestimated, because if you allow them to flank us, they can devastate us with their torpedoes. The enemy fleet will consist of a battleship, a battlecruiser, and a whole bunch of different DDs of various different classes. In total, they will have 10, 16, 20 destroyers. <laughs> Jesus. I'm going to have one battlecruiser, a heavy cruiser. Um, and destroyers of my own making for a maximum funding of 80 million. There's a time limit of 6 hours. I need to sink 65% of enemies. Now, there is an interesting caveat here. 65% of enemies. Nowhere does it say that I need to sink the battleship and the battlecruiser. If I can sink a larger number of destroyers, then that should be enough. Now, that means that I might be able to go for a couple of heavy destroyer builds, gun builds, that is, and see if I can just sort of knife fight, gun build, gun boat, the DDs. Maybe that will work. Let's see. By the way, we have equal techs, uh, and that means that I have another 10 million available, which is nice. Modern destroyer leader. That is what I was hoping for. Modern destroyer leader. Now, these guys can pack a maximum of 3,750 tons. I can do this and I'll build fewer destroyers, but there is a downside, and that's a turning circle. And a turning circle is not really something you want to have too much of when you're building a destroyer. You want to have those guys um, fast and preferably agile. If I were to make them small, I have a turning circle of 268. That's a lot better, but I do build more destroyers, which could be considered a downside as I would do I need to do more micromanagement. You know what? We're going to do it. We're going to go for a gun heavy destroyer build. No idea if that'll work, but I am eager to try. Now, let's go with a maximum group armor. I think I end up with four destroyers anyway, by the way. Uh, geared turbines I don't know if I need all this speed. 36 knots would probably give me more than enough speed to get up to range of the destroyers, just to catch the enemy destroyers, and at the same time not make my turning circle that large. I'm going to go for oil. Um, with this speed, if I go for the lightest funnel, is that going to give me enough engine efficiency? 70%. Let's go for induced. There we go, 100%. All right, that gives me about a thousand tons to put guns on this ship. That is a substantial amount of guns. These are all Mark Fives. That makes it even better. Now let's ensure that these DDs have quite a bit of survivability, because they will get shot at a lot. Uh, Electro hydraulic turrets. No, let's go. Well. It is potentially worth it on a destroyer because it means faster traverse speed. And I'll, I'm intending to do gunfighting, knife fighting, so very, very short range. But that does mean that, of course, you're sacrificing... Well, you, no. If I were a battleship, I think I could just make do with hydraulics or advanced hydraulics. But considering the range, I need fast turning turrets. Now, if I go for auto loaders, that gives me less gun reload time, but it also reduces turret traverse speed. But that goes with every one of them. That's the problem. Let's say I have one five inch dual. Oh, well, not like that. Uh, reload time is currently 13 seconds. That's pretty painful. I want a lot better than that. 7.8. That's quite good. Four-inch guns, six seconds. 
Damage 873, 476. Although I'll not be using Lidite. Because the chance of flash fire is far too great. And I don't have any barbette armor to offset it. So using Lidite is a really bad plan. Something else that still does a decent amount of HE damage while not having a lot of flash fire is... Well, I probably end up with 2 powder or TNT. This has minus 5% flash fire, this has minus 10% flash fire. Does make your shells pretty expensive, but considering I'm just a destroyer, I probably won't need that much. Let's throw in a rangefinder and a generation... Do I need a generation 2 rangefinder? Do I really need a lot of gun aiming speed? Do I need a raider at all? Do well, it doesn't add that much weight to the ship, it's just 50 tons. What I'll definitely need is a sonar station. I want to see those torpedoes way before they become a threat. Now, it's nice to have guns, but I'll also need a torpedo launcher. We're gonna go with two per side. Ideally, they would fit next to the, f the, the funnel here, but I don't think that's quite gonna happen. Here. This way I can do a torpedo run on, well, either side. Which, in my case, is quite likely to happen. Firing arc is good. Now, about 200 tons left to put on some guns. 5-inch guns are pretty useful. They do a nice amount of damage. They have a decent rate of fire. Um, their accuracy at, let's say, 2,500 meters is 18%. 16%. So yeah, your accuracy is quite good, but you're sacrificing rate of fire. What if the Germans built a Fletcher? Like that. Five single guns. This means I build six destroyers. That is quite a lot in case I am micromanaging. I'm gonna have to make them a little bigger to just spend more on the ships. <laughs> I know that sounds weird, but I need to reduce the amount of ships that I get. Oh, the torpedo launchers don't like to sit there now. Let's reinstate those. And considering that these will be short-range knife-fighting weapons, I'll probably want fast torpedoes on those. As for the size, 21 inch will do. Now this means that I have a bit more room. Quite a bit more room, in fact. What if I upgrade all the turrets to dual turrets? Is that doable? Or is that going to be too heavy? Yeah, it's slightly too heavy. Well, we're adding more tons to the ship anyway. 3500? Ah, no. No, 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 no. That makes the ship too big. Turning circle is 306. <laughs> and now it's 300. Really? <laughs> 50 tons makes the ship significantly larger, but it doesn't significantly add to the turning circle? Alright. These are long boys. What's my turning slowdown? Yeah, 32.5. Wait. I lose less speed if I'm longer? Really? That's pretty interesting. That is not at all what I expected. I thought that if I have a, sh a smaller boat, a shorter boat, I would lose less speed. But in fact, if I'm a longer boat, I lose less speed. Okay. In that case, we're gonna go for the longer boat. At this point, these things have a uh, pretty healthy amount of firepower. There is a lot of unused deck space though. Good lord, what are you going to do with all this stuff? 5.4% 4 weight offset. Oof. 5.5? 5 .5? It's only getting worse? What's the heaviest thing on the ship? 55 tons, 110 tons. You are shifting back. Now you're shifting to here. 2.3. Maybe I can throw this one back a notch. One five. 
See, that's pretty easy to offset, because I can just shift this one forward, which also gives it better firing arcs. I can shift this one forward, now we have point 0.1. That gives me 11 tons. And only 4 destroyers. Not too bad. We're gonna go knife fighting. Um, I'll put on a bit more armor on the turrets, although at this range, which will be 5,000 5, meters-ish. I'm not really expecting to do any kind of uh, armor mit or not to really have any kind of armor mitigation. One and a half inches on the turret <laughs> is the maximum that I can get. Yeah, uh, you, you generally don't want to arm a destroyer too much with armor because it just doesn't work too well. Okay, I'd say that she's ready. This is uh, orig originally called the V1 class. Um... I think she's just about ready. Can I shift this one forward slightly? I'm trying to get rid of that point two. Point one. I think I'm better off moving this thing forward. Oh, I can't. This one? No? Shift this one back. Point five? No. Okay, then we're gonna go with point two. All right, let's see. Let's knife fight some destroyers. Here we go. 22 ships for the Russian Empire. I have a battlecruiser and one heavy. And I believe that they... Well, they're not strictly required to stay alive, but I need to keep 55% of my fleet alive. Which is still a, a pretty substantial number. I have a battlecruiser and a heavy cruiser. Where's my... Dis Hello? Oh, you guys are on the other side. Okay, never mind then. I was wondering where the hell they were. They are to the north, which is good news for me. V1, 2, 3, uh, sorry, V1, 2, and 4 are on the right side. V3 is going to have to join in. And the battle cruiser and the heavy cruiser, let's see what we have. Kronprinz, standard bulkheads, not too bad. Nice set of 14 inch guns you got there. A good amount of 5 inch secondaries, which will definitely keep destroyers away. 3-inch secondaries. A turning circle of a kilometer. I don't like that. Sonar 1. Hmm. Lid-Eye 2. Increased ammo shells. Barbette 2. This thing is a flash fire waiting to happen. This is not great. Tell me Atlantis is not that bad. Maximum bulkheads. Yay, look at that. 9-inch guns. Lid I two, hmm. Couple of fours, bunch of twos, bunch more twos, even more twos. These are doubles. Sorry, these are triples. These are doubles and these are singles. And we have 15 kilometer range, 22 inch torpedoes in a set of fives and a set of fours. I like this ship. We can be friends. Uh, you are, however, a lot slower than that battle cruiser. Kronprinz is going to be turning around, or zipping around, at 36 and a half knots. Which is not something that my heavy cruiser at 27 knots will be able to do. So we're going to have to either slow down the battle cruiser or split these ships up. I'm not generally a big fan of splitting ships up. So in this case, I'll just have to slow down the battle cruiser. Now, let's have the destroyer join. Uh, that is div 3. And scout out with div 4. I don't know what the starting range is. But it looks pretty decent. As we have a times 10 speed option. That's generally something you don't have if the enemy is really close. Now, I first want to see them. And I'm hoping that my radar is going to assist with me seeing them before they see me. Oh, we got a ping. Where? Here. 15 clicks. Very good. I want you guys to slow down a bit because we have one stay behind. You need to join, join div 4. Sorry, div 3 now. 
Yeah, okay, V3 is still motoring it at 36 knots, trying to get closer. Alright, let the knife fight begin. Bring me some destroyers to eat. Now my destroyers are pretty large. 3750 tons. And that means that I will potentially get spotted before they do. Um, they do have older tech though. Yep, see, I've been detected. Something spotted me. Whoa, and something is also immediately opening up on me. Good lord, hello. Could you calm down for a moment? Can we see where that fire is coming from? Because it seems to be... Oh, it's pretty close. Four clicks out? Something like that? Four and a half? So in between four and six clicks, we have an enemy ship. Potentially more than one. Let's fall back a little and see if we can get some better identification on these ships. They've also spotted the rest. And they're starting to launch torps at me. That's pretty good. Because I can see them coming from miles away, which... Ooh, that's not so good. Which means that they're probably uh, not stealthy torps. Jesus. Is that a battle cruiser shooting me, potentially? Ow. V2 is already taking some fire. Now, I have to keep 55% of allies alive. Translation, keep 55% of your fleet alive. I have six ships. So if I lose three, I am in deep trouble. So better not lose too many ships. Ideally, none. Five-inch shells hitting me. Fuck's sake, speed up, guys. This is no time to linger. Fire and flooding on V4. V4 speed. 17 knots. It's because she's trying to stay in formation. And I still haven't seen the enemy. Oh, no, there you are. Range. 3.4. Jesus. Okay. Tell me, what do you look like? A couple of... Threes or fours? A single torpedo lube. T torpedo lube. Okay. Uh, yeah, right. A torpedo tube on the stern and a bunch more. So effectively five torpedo tubes. Now it's my time to start gunning. The thing is, they have 20 destroyers and I've only spotted one so far. So there's a lot more where this one came from. At least I'm pretty confident that they haven't launched torpedoes. Because considering how quickly I spotted the rest of them, I would probably see them if they actually used them. Could you guys either get a room or start falling into the formation as I have requested? Because this is highly inappropriate. This is how new destroyers are made here. You get two destroyers. And uh, they get all... Uh, well, I suppose they get the torpedo loop. And, uh, well... I don't know, a few months later, boom. New destroyers pr produced, <laughs> if you will. <laughs> anyway, back to the battle. That DD took some pretty serious damage. And it seems to still have some engine issues, but it got undetected. I'm going to chase it in. Our smoke screen's back up. How far am I away from the rest of my ships? 16 clicks. I want you guys to come back. Because I could use that heavy cruiser, and especially the secondaries on the battle cruiser, to do some more damage against the destroyers. Look at that. Engine damaged, repaired, repaired, damaged. And I think it might be dead in the water. Torpedo in the water. Okay, you seem to have some issues with water inside your boat, as opposed to outside. That might have to do with your minimum bulkheads. This could be the first kill <laughs> out of 20. No, I only need to sink 65% of enemies, so I don't have to kill all of them. Just enough of them. That's the first. Now, there is one tiny little issue, and that has to do with the torpedoes which are coming in. Here. I'd rather not see if these destroyers are up to taking a torpedo. 
The torps that these things have is 24 inch, but they're fast. 63.5. So that lines up with my prediction of uh, them being not so sneaky torpedoes. New ship has been detected. Immediately the DDs open up on them. Time to smoke it up. It's going to make us harder to hit. Good amount of damage. I like how these DDs are performing. You know, if you play World of Warships, you might know the ship Okotnik, which is basically um, Russian designers going, how many torpedo? Sorry, how many guns can I fit onto one ship? And then they started thinking, you know, we're going to make it longer, we're going to add more guns and, and more and more and more. And then they came up with a Kotnik, which has a large number of, I think, 4-inch guns. This is basically the German version of it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 turrets. Of 14 inch. Oh, sorry, uh, well, on a DD. Of 5 inch. So that's a substantial amount of firepower that I can put out with a destroyer of all ships. Unfortunately, it looks like these things have some sort of Russian cloaking device. Because every now and then they just utterly disappear. Hello again. Torpedoes away from V2. V2 is the only ship that I haven't smoked up yet because it's not inside the division. Ah, there's another one. Good work. A bit of damage onto one of the torpedo boats. Well, not torpedo boats. Onto the one of the destroyers. Uh, don't torp unless otherwise directed, guys. I need those torps potentially later. This one does not seem to have minimum bulkheads on it. Are you the same class? You're the same class. I'm seeing the single torpedo there and the quad launcher over there. So the, yes, there's a high likelihood that those are the same ship class. Uh, here's a different ship. This one lacks the single tube. Identification is still not proceeding very quickly. I'm sort of using the V2 right now as a screening force for the rest of the destroyers. If a torpedo gets detected, we're immediately going to have to turn the entire division away. Now, the other ships are also coming back. And it's the battlecruiser's 14-inch guns, which are trying to do damage against the destroyer. But as you can see, the accuracy is not quite there yet. On the other hand, if we land one good hit, that might very well be the end of the destroyer. I'm going to push into this guy because I think it's just these two together. There goes another one. Flood it. Flood it some more. Come on. The battle unfolds with one of the Russian ships severely burning. But more importantly, flooding. Mikhail, no ammo left? Reduced ammo for the torpedoes. So effectively you only have one salvo then. This guy too? Five inch guns. Okay, not four inch. The V2 is starting to take a bit more fire from the rest of these uh, mysterious smoke clouds over here. And from something relatively short distance away. Maintain fire on the uh, Delny. Let's see if we can sink another one of these guys. Accuracy is going up. We're at 9.6%. Oh, he's turning. Good damage. There's another ship. Hello. Another one of those small guys. Ooh, now he's starting to take a bit too much fire, buddy. Turn away. <clears throat> uh, port torpedo launchers might be ready to go off against Mikhail. Let's see if they want to launch. Delny sinks. Mikhail... Is about to crash into the other ship. Don't launch the torps. Even if you have them. Now, it looks like this ship might run into the wreck, which would ideally instantly slow it down to nothing. Meaning that you're a sitting duck. Oh, that helps. Mikhail, once again, minimum bulkheads on this ship. Four compartments have already been flooded. Torpedo in the water. 
Assume target V2. V2, turn away. It's just a single torpedo, though. It's not a larger salvo that I have to dodge. Alright, Mikhail. Whoa! Shit. V4 just took a torpedo. I was too busy with the V2. Idiot. This is what happens when you take too much focus with one of the ships. The V4 is flooding. But I made these things pretty very... Well, pretty very much. <laughs> pretty seriously compartmented. Sorry, guys. It's late. Uh, the ships are compartmentalized. And that means that a few compartments can flood. And the ship won't immediately sink. And that's what you can see happening here. As opposed to the Mikhail, which has a few bulkheads which do take on some water. Now, what I find interesting is that I still haven't found their bigger ships. Supposedly, there is a battleship, an older dreadnought out here. And, not just that. There is also supposed to be a battlecruiser here. A modern battlecruiser is what I was promised. Maintain course. What the hell? Damn it. Pull the V3 off the line. So, not all of them have uh, very high visibility torps. And there is uh, about a 100% chance that I just did not see them in the log. Keep gunning these mysterious smoke clouds down, will ya? Fire. What sort of design are you? The one that burns pretty well. Yep, same design. Okay. Keep gunning it down. Yeah, it's starting to flood. Now this is where the majority of the torpedo boats slash destroyers are. They're currently classed as TBs. But I'm pretty confident that they're all destroyers. Because there were no DD... Uh, no, sorry, no TBs in this scenario. No torpedo boats. In case you want to send in your own scenario, by the way, you can do that through the link down below in the description. That is going to get me all the information that I need to run your scenario. But there um, there are a thousand plus scenarios in my inbox. And no, I'm not joking. There really are a thousand plus scenarios in my inbox. I get about five to six every day. So your chances to get featured with a scenario are not great. I don't want to get your hopes up, and uh, I particularly find it annoying when people ask, Hey, did you receive my scenario yet? Uh, yeah, I receive all of them. But usually it's uh, someone who's very excited about their scenario, and I get that. But I can only do so many scenarios per week. Ooh, that was a great shot. There we go. Flooding. I can only do so many scenarios a week, so uh, it might very well take me quite a while for me to get around to your scenario. Alright, the battlecruiser is now pitching in. And I still haven't seen the big ships. They just haven't been detected. Where are they? Let's get the V3 to smoke and turn. V4 too. And you just torpedoed my battlecruiser. That seems like a terrible idea. Has the battlecruiser done anything to contribute? Oh, it does. Oh yeah, that 500 point hit, that was the 14 inch gun. Now these... These are made of slightly sterner stuff. Few bulkheads as opposed to minimum. Piss off. Yeah, I got hit again. This is the risk of knife fighting. You get torped. This is the third DD that got torped. Only the V1 has not been torpedoed yet, but I can change that by putting it at risk. I might lose the V2 here. Potentially, because she is getting quite heavily flooded. There's the torpedo salvo that is coming for me. Have you been hit yet? Yeah, by a 5 inch gun. So that's a DD gun. Let's see, can we sink this one before she torpedoes again? They're not sneaky torps. These aren't either. 
I'm just not paying attention. That's the problem. And, um, and I've addressed this before, but I'll do it again. In case you're shouting at your screen, look at the fucking report screen. Look at it, because there are just notifications that say torpedo detected. Yes, you're right. But here's the difference between you and me. You're just sitting there watching the video. And I'm trying to um, play the video game. I'm trying to think of what the next move should be. I'm still more or less guesstimating what the position of those battle cruiser and battleship should be. So where I am not to turn. I'm doing commentary. Uh, I'm keeping an eye on the time to see if it's uh, not running too long. If I should speed up the recording speed or not. I'm trying to look for torpedoes visually. And I have to look at what ships are where. What enemy ships are doing. So uh, my mind is a little busier than yours. And that means that, uh, yes, it is fairly obnoxious of me, to, or fairly easy of me to miss torpedo warnings. And I do try to pay attention, but uh, more often than not, I just don't see them. That was another 14-inch hit. Wh what? Oh, I hit their torpedo launcher. 14-inch hits DD, torpedo, overpen. So the uh, Rochal took... Let me get this right. That DD took a, a shot to a torpedo. The shell went through the torpedo launcher. <laughs> came out the other end and the, the Rochal didn't die. I'm not even mad. <laughs> How'd you survive that? That's impressive. Now, how's the Atlantis faring? I had to turn her away from the battle cruiser because she was getting torpedoed. But let's have you go off against the Gavril. And all of those two inch guns should be pretty annoying if you're playing a DD. If you're sailing a DD, there we go. A few bulkheads, but she did just torp. And she torped the Atlantis. So, time to turn you away. Speaking of torpedoing. Have there been any further gift sets coming out of the Russian DDs? Sonar 3. Damn. Okay. See, here's what I don't get. I was told that we have the same tech. Then, how are these DDs obsolete? Because these are pretty advanced torpedo launchers. These are Mark V five, 5 inch guns. They have a lot of secondaries of 2 inch. They're not terribly quick, I'll give them that. But they do have some bulkheads. They have Sonar 3, Generation 2 radar. These are not outdated DDs. They're smaller. By about half the size of the V1 class. But I wouldn't call them obsolete. I wouldn't quite go that far. Still no word on the enemy capital ships. So let's see if we can get some more destroyers slightly butchered. I think the next ship that might launch... Oh, hold on. The Desna just launched a torpedo and ran out. Good. This one still has torps. This one still has torps. Still torps. Still torps. I'm still waiting for the uh, Trukmenets to launch her torpedo set. So I can immediately turn away. Any moment now. There she goes. Bye bye. Atlantis has done a decent portion of damage against the Gavril. But I think the real winner currently is the Kronprins. Who narrowly avoided a torpedo, by the way. V2 is. Well, maybe she could get a tow from the Kronprins because she is not getting out of here anytime soon. 11 knots. Full salvo going against uh, the uh, Trukmanets. There's the torpedoes. There? It's a curious choice. Oh, he just fired a second salvo. Cut that out. I think that the enemy capital ship is over there. Here. They're 21, 22 clicks out. They could have made a hell of a difference in this fight. Oh, shit. I'm sort of being cross-torped. 
this torpedo set here and this one over here. I could return to the torpedoes. I could fire a torpedo in return, but I don't think it'll hit. Okay, we're fine. Get back to full speed. That should also give me a bit more of a turning circle. Uh, you know what? There are there are quite a few targets behind, so let's activate the torpedo launcher. And I want to keep an eye on the Kronprinz. Ensure that she doesn't take too much damage. The Atlantis is getting torped again. And again and again and again. You're going to have to turn potentially harder than that if you want to avoid that one. Oh, shit. Well, there is a gap here. For now. V1, are you doing alright? No way. Is this DD going to mess up? You should know that there's a torpedo on the way. He knows. But he's not doing anything. Or not enough. Boom. Good work, V1. Good work. I really did not expect to land that torpedo, but it could almost instantly cause the death of this ship. Do you have sonar? Yeah, somewhat. You're gonna be all right. Where's that single torp? Oh shit! You're getting penned by something. Oh, you did take a torp. All right. In that case, we're just gonna have to turn circles for you, seeing as we cannot really do anything else. Come on, gun down this very, very weak destroyer. Kick it while it's down. Switch fire. Flooding on the Trukmanets. Buzoprechny. Two and en one engine damaged and a rudder damaged and still flooding. But unfortunately for you, no ready torpedoes. So that means that you don't really have that much to do against the V1, other than try and shoot back, which you're not actively doing. Shit, that sounded like a torpedo slammed into one of my ships again. Or, no, I hit one of them! But the Kronprinz is also flooding. Standard complement of bulkheads. But there's more on the way. Ow. This is the thing with knife fighting. With destroyers, with any other ship class. If you're knife fighting, you're going to get hit. But I find it to be more interesting and more amusing than just playing this game and sticking to maximum range. Because that is just not that enjoyable. Atlantis, are you alright? Not really. Still has a rudder stuck. Kronprinz... Yeah, you're going to have to disengage. I'm going to need to do a bit more damage with the V1, probably. Switch fire to Albatross. That really helps. Fantastic hit. What happened to you? 7.7. .7. You're the one that tripped the battlecruiser. But you just took a serious amount of flooding hits from the V1 and you're dead there we go next up should be the uh, Bezuprechny seeing if I can kill that I'm really hoping Atlantis can make it out I'm kind of concerned about Atlantis you're running pretty visible torps Let's just throw out some torps Fortunately, with the damaged rudder, the Atlantis is exceptionally unpredictable for the enemy. But... I have some problems heading my way at speed. I'm not sure if I can level out with the damaged rudder. That's going to be a problem. I, she might eat one. It's going to be right on the stern. Yeah, there it is. Boom. 600 damage. Hefty torpedo. 
23 inch. Jesus. Don Prince managed to confirm or managed to fight her flooding enough to stay alive for a while. All right, smell you later. Maybe this torpedo one will work. There we go, torpedoes away. The other destroyer didn't do too well when trying to avoid the torpedo, so I'm really hoping that the smelly isn't going to do too well either. They did detect them. They're trying to maneuver away. Whether they're successful remains to be seen. Let's increase speed to flank and maneuver away for a while. Because I think I'm actually getting relatively close to the amount of ships that I need to sink. I mean, sure, they still have plenty of ships. But I have already sunk quite a few of their DDs. Looks like the smelly... Yeah, the smelly successfully evaded. Alright, V1, full turn. Duprechny is still... Sorry, Bezuprechny is still alive. Lieutenant Sagiv needs to go. Desna is very heavily damaged, but inside of a smokescreen. Don't torp. How are the rest of the DDs faring? Because I did tell them to piss off. Just to keep some distance. And they're doing that. You know what? Let's switch side. If I have these guys too close together, there's a really high chance I lose both in one torpedo run. Atlantis will probably not survive. Ah, we finally have eyes on the Dreadnought. The heavy cruiser is too heavily damaged, and I don't expect her to survive. Whoa, 15 inch guns? That is a pretty serious Dreadnought you got there. I'm still switching to the V1 every now and then, because I believe that this ship is going to do quite well. She's already done 1,000 points of damage. V3, 237. V2, 632. V4, 178. Uh, the Heavy Cruiser, 447. And the Kron Prince, 2.5k. Well done, sir. To be fair, though, I think the Smelly is the ship that I have micromanaged the most so far. Let's switch to the Smelly. Fiorgi is out of torpedoes. Smelly taking some fire. A few bulkheads. I still have plenty of ammunition, just not too many torpedoes left. That's concerning. Come on, gun that thing down. Tivorgi. Oh, that was rude. That was probably the last salvo from the Smelly. So that means... Ah, Fazatnik sinks. Good work. Unfortunately, the V2 also is getting hit again. Smoke and smoke. And smoke some more. Okay, back to the V1. Fight me, guys. Fight me. Just ideally one at a time. I'm trying to get really close to the Smelly. So I can torpedo that ship. Ideally, I would flood her a little. Slowing her down. Maybe a damage to the engine. Like that. And then I can wipe her off. Just kill her off with a torpedo run. This one's also out of torpedoes. Yeah, now you're getting the right idea. Some flooding. Some engine damage. Some rudder damage. Ooh. Jesus, that was some larger shells coming in. 800 meters out. Another fire. I'm taking a lot of hits on the V1 right now. Starboard turn. My rudder's down. Zabi Zabiyaki sinks. V1, torpedoes away. Two hits on Smelly. Smelly's down. Fantastic. Well done. Unfortunately, that might be the last stun of the V1. Unless you can get that flooding under control real quick. She is going down. Bistri sinks. Also heavy flooding. Believe it or not, but so far I haven't lost a ship. Dobrovolets sinks. Also flooding. Atlantis detected torpedoes. Um, yeah... 
You're still flooding. That torpedo might sink you. Because I cannot evade that. Another flooding hit. That compartment is not yet flooded. It's not looking good. So far, believe it or not, <laughs> it's kind of a flawless victory. Well, it's flawless, it's not yet a victory. The only capable torpedo boat we still have left here is the, the, uh, the Bezu, Bezu Preczny. She still has a nice complement of torpedoes. The Tvorji does not. I believe this one was out too, right? Sergeyev. Unfortunately, I cannot close in anymore because I'm maneuvering at 9 knots. So I'm really slow, and I have so much battle damage that my chance to hit is probably really bad. 0.5. I am aiming, which is 50% or off, and I have 21% damage and stability. What ship is still combat capable? Kronprins, to some extent. At least in order to do damage against destroyers, she'll be fine. Oh, look at that. At this rate, Sergeyev is going to just run into me when I torp it. Oh, don't kill me. Shit. Several torpedoes incoming. Look at the turning circle on the V1. Holy shit. Somebody installed a bow prop when I wasn't paying attention. It turns on a dime. Beautiful. I need an updated turning circle. I need to know just how quickly this thing can turn. Whoa. Two good hits on the Sergeyev. V1. No. Yeah, V1's down. But also Sergeyev is down. Well done. That's the first ship I've lost. By some miracle, the Atlantis is still alive. Impressive. Impressive. Now, how are the rest of the DDs? Because the V4 is damaged, a bit flooded, but she can still achieve a reasonable speed. The V2, not so much. I'm going to pull her away. V3, two damaged engines. Speed is reduced to 20 knots. Flooding, half. But she might still be a capable warship. Letucci. And Vnimantelli. And what is this? Gavril. We've already seen the Gavril a while. They don't have that many ships left. Oh shit. You got hit again, and now the Atlantis is down. If I lose one more ship, I probably lose the fight. I can't have that. It's really sad that the game doesn't give me a tally of the amount of ships that I've sunk so far. Because that would be really valuable now. Poor Atlantis. She fought well. How much damage did she do in the end? 1.1k. She took 3.1. That's a substantial amount of damage for a heavy cruiser to take. Tivorji sinks. Heavy flooding. What? Did you get hit by a 14-inch gun? You got hit by a 14-inch gun twice. Yeah. Something is shooting me from this smoke screen right here. Trying to set my own smoke screen. Shit. It's not something I can use on this ship. There you are. You still have torpedoes, you little shit. Get over here. Ship is damaged, and she's gone again. V3, I need you here. Whoa! A couple of torpedoes came out of nowhere, didn't they? No, sorry. Yeah, now they did. They came from over there. Damn. Don't sink. Don't sink. Seriously, don't sink. No, 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 no. Look at that thing fighting the flooding. That is one properly motivated crew. Sinker, we lose the mission. Okay, sir. 
We got this. We got this. V3, get your butt over here. We have a destroyer to sink. How is that thing so fucking stealthy? Five clicks out. Oh shit, I spot the battleship again. That's not... Holy shit, you're close. Range. 9.9. .9. Fine. Uh, torpedo the battleship. Minute... Oh. Oh. Uh, turn. They already kind of know where you are. But it looks like these Fiatoy Yakov has fired so many 15-inch shells that she's not too eager to spend the last 15... Sorry, 180 of them on a destroyer. That serves my purpose fantastic. Well done. Now, let's check in with the Kronprins. Because there are still DDs about. Like that one over there. We're still trying to kill it. Can we launch the torpedoes, please? Please? Is the starboard launcher down? No, it's not. There we go. It just had to be uh, persuaded, shall we say. Now, we're going to do one of those uh, super turns again. If we can get a torpedo hit or two on the uh, Sviatoy, on the battleship, it might actually sink. Does it know that the torpedoes are coming? Yes, it will. Whoa! Speaking of... Speaking of, I narrowly dodged that salvo. Hello. Yes, Latucci sinks. And the mission is a complete success. Wow. That was unexpected. Job done. I lost a heavy cruiser. I lost the destroyer. That other destroyer narrowly survived. That was a really well-motivated crew to make sure that the ship didn't sink. And with that, I did not drop below the 55% losses. But they did. Now, I'd really like a button that just gives me an overview of what I lost and what I sunk during the battle. And I would also like to see um, a button or a button that says, let's say Sif's version of just one more turn or Ultimate Admiral's version of just one more turn. I kind of want to see what happened with the battleship and her pending doom in the form of my torpedoes. If those would have hit, I might have sunk a battleship just for shits and giggles. Anyway, this mission is a success. The mission is complete. And that also unlocks Prevail in the Mediterranean, which is something else I'll take on at a different time. I hope you guys enjoyed the fight. Let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comment section, and I shall see you soon for another video.